Electricity rate here in Southern California is 45 cents per kilowatt hour. At least that's what I've been paying here in Southern California. If you think that's expensive, think again. What if I told you that there's another rate that's much higher than this, way, way, way higher than this, that you've been paying for all your life. And it's a whopping $1,000 per kilowatt hour. Would you believe it? Of course not. I didn't believe it either when I first calculated it. And do you know what it is? 9 volt battery. Yep, these batteries cost you a whopping $1,000 per kilowatt hour. Let me show you. I'm going to open my Walmart app on my phone. In store price, 9 volt battery. 16 for 4, 897 for 2 Duracell, so 449 each, right? 17 for 4, so on average, about $4.50 each 9-volt battery. A typical 9-volt battery has about half an amp hour of capacity, or 4.5 watt hour. It costs $4.50 each. That means it costs $1 per watt hour, or $1,000 per kilowatt hour. People often say a very complicated math problem gives you a headache. But in this case, a very simple math problem gives me a headache. In this video, I'm going to show you how to replace these 9 volt batteries with a rechargeable lithium ion battery so that you don't have to buy any of these 9 volt batteries ever again. In my previous video, i show you how to replace AA size alkaline battery with this Sanyo 14500 lithium ion battery. This 14500 lithium ion battery is exactly the same size as a AA size. The only difference is that it operates on around 4 volts instead of 1.5 volts. And coincidentally, two of these together is exactly the same physical size as a 9 volt battery. Not only that, because each of these is 4 volts. When you put two in series, you got about 8.4 volts when it's fully charged. Very close to 9 volts. What a coincidence that two of these have exactly the same physical size and also almost the same voltage as a 9 volt battery. And that means when I put two of these in series, I can replace a 9 volt battery. The only difference now is a 9 volt battery is disposable. You throw it away after you're done with it. This is rechargeable. There are a lot of devices that use 9 volt battery. This is just a small sample. The most common devices that use 9 volt batteries are multimeter. And over here I have a stud finder. That's a digital tackle meter. And we got a thermometer. I'm going to go over each one of them and show you how I modify them to use with a couple of 14500 lithium ion battery. Let's take a look at the stud sensor here. It uses 9 volt battery here, but there's no connector. There are two metal clips right there, and you insert your battery directly in there. And this one is actually the easiest one to modify. And all I have to do for this one is to cut little bit pieces of plastic so that the 14500 battery will fit in there. So we've got the positive sign here and all we have to do is to insert the positive end and it will go to that metal clip right there. It fits in here perfectly. And then the negative end will go to the negative on the second battery. Now we just need to connect the two battery terminals together. And I'm just going to use a couple of magnets and we're just going to put it on the battery terminal. You can see the two magnets are touching each other, so they're making a connection between the two batteries. So now the batteries are connected in series, so I should be able to turn on the unit just like that. Yep, it's working perfectly. Wow, it found a stud in me. Right there, there's a stud. That's confirmed, I have a stud. The problem with the setup 
is that the magnet occupies the space in here and that's where the latch goes. So I cannot close this door anymore and that's a problem. So I'm going to have to find a different way to connect the two batteries together. And the solution to this is pretty simple. I spot welded the nickel strip onto the two battery terminals and I folded the nickel strip so that I can use another nickel strip and insert it in there and connect the two terminals together. So let's put it in. Now I can use a nickel strip and insert it in there. Now you can see it's being clamped together by the two folded nickel strips. So now it creates a connection between the two battery terminals. And now I should be able to close this door just like that. And it should be able to turn on. There we go. Found another start. Another way to do this is to connect the two batteries in series permanently by spot welding the two terminals together. But I don't want to do that because if they are connected in series, I'm going to need to make a balance cable for them. And when I charge them, I'm going to need a balance charger to charge them. But if they are separated, I can just charge them individually and any charger uh, can charge this battery. It doesn't have to be a balance charger. It's much easier to charge them this way. This start finder is easy to modify. In fact, I didn't even have to modify much at all. But it's not always as easy. This thermometer uses a 9 volt battery connector and it doesn't have enough room for the two uh, lithium ion cells in here. And the connector is too big, so I cannot close this door with that connector. So I'm going to have to use a smaller connector. The XT30 connector is much smaller than the 9 volt connector so I replace it with the uh, XT30 connector so that I can close this door properly. So here is the battery pack with two 14500 cells connected in series. That's the main power cable and that's the balance connector so that I can balance charge this battery. Now we can connect the battery in and the battery will fit in here perfectly just like that. Everything fits in here perfectly and we can close the door just like that. Let's see if it works. There we go, it's working. The next device I want to modify is my multimeter. Most multimeters use 9 volt batteries. This one here actually modified it with a couple of 18650 batteries. But the batteries are too big to fit inside the multimeter. I use some foam to make the case for the battery. But it makes it pretty big and bulky and it doesn't look good. These two 14500 cells will fit perfectly inside so I can get rid of the foam. The upside of using a pair of 18650 batteries is that they, because they are a lot bigger than 9 volt battery, they have a lot more capacity than a 9 volt battery, so they last a very long time. So even though it lasts a very long time, I would prefer a smaller and lighter uh, multimeter. So I'm going to install these two 14500 batteries in here. So here it is, I removed the foam and the 18650 and I install the two 14500 cells in here. I spot weld them together so they are physically connected together and I solder the battery terminals directly onto the circuit board. This time I don't want to make the balance cable and connector anymore because this battery seems to last a very long time on a multimeter so I figure I only have to charge it probably once a year so I don't want to make the effort to make the balance cable and then I still need to charge them with a balance charger. So I just make a quick and dirty series connection between the two batteries and solder it right on here. In order to charge this battery pack it's actually quite simple. All I need is a TP4056 board, connect to the output to a pair of uh, alligator clips and then 
I'm just going to use magnets to uh, connect to the terminals of the battery. Just like that. Now we can just put on the alligator clip and it should be charging. You can see there it's not charging because this battery pack is full. But let me demonstrate here. This battery is not full so you can see it is charging right now. The light turns red. So for this pack, because the two cells are connected in series, you can only charge one cell at a time. If you use another TP4056 board on the same circuit to charge the other cell at the same time, it will short out because they all share ground. So you have to use another circuit with another TP4056 board to charge the other cell. Or wait until this cell is full, then charge the other cell. Now that the battery is full and ready to go, and just go ahead and close the cover. Put the two screws on and it's good to go. Let's see if it works. There we go, it's working. Let me show you another multimeter that I also modified with a couple of 18650 batteries. I did it a few years ago and it's still working now, today. And uh, it's also a little bit too big, so uh, let's upgrade this with a smaller 14500 battery pack. And here it is, it's what it looks like after I put in the 14500 battery pack. And the inside of this um, multimeter is exactly the same as the other one. Even though the design is a little bit different, but the inside is the same. The battery compartment is the same. And the modification I made is exactly the same as the other one. So the, the pack directly to the main circuit board. And let's see if it works. There we go. Works great. The next device I want to modify is my tachometer. This one I also modified it with a pair of 18650 cells and a foam case, but it looks extremely hideous. So let's remove the 18650 in the foam case so I can insert my 14500 batteries in here. The battery housing on this unit is a little bit too tight and it's a little bit too small for the 14500 cells. So I cut out this piece of plastic so that you have enough room for the 14500 pack to go in here. So now fits in here perfectly. And I can close the cover easily, just like that. Let's see if it works. There we go. It's working perfectly. The last device I want to show you is my multimeter. This one also has a small battery housing and it's very tight. So I cut out a piece of plastic on the side here so that my new 14500 pack fit in here just fine so that I can close this door. Otherwise, uh, this will stick out too much and I cannot close this door without cutting out this plastic here. So there, fits perfectly. And let's see if it works. There we go. Works great. So there you have it. I have converted all my 9 volt power devices to lithium ion batteries from $1,000 per kilowatt hour to $0 per kilowatt hour. Of course, I still have to pay for the two 14,500 cells, but two of these is still cheaper than one single 9 volt battery if you know where to look. As far as capacity goes, this 9 volt battery is about 500 milliamp hour. These two 14,500 lithium ion together at 8.4 volt is 740 milliamp hour. So the capacity of two of these is about one and a half times more than a typical 9 volt battery. So not only I have 
free power with these two lithium ions, I even have more capacity compared to the alkaline 9 volt battery. And that's all I have for now folks. Thanks for watching. I will see you next time.